Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Paper Circuit Podcast, or as we call it, PC Squared. I'm your host, Gautam Godse, and together we explore new ideas and meet interesting people from all over the world. Today, my guest is my friend and my classmate from school, Maria Patrapurwala, or as I used to know her, Maria Bhanpurwala. She has built a successful career teaching yoga to young and old uh, in India. She has dedicated herself to this mission and has built a yoga academy in Pune. Hi, Maria. Welcome to Paper Circuit. Namaste. Hello, everyone. Hi, Gautam. Hey, good to have you. And thanks for uh, doing this. Really appreciate uh, uh, you making some time for us. So why don't you introduce yourself and uh, you know, tell us uh, you know, a little bit about what happened after uh, you know, school. So after uh, you graduated from Rosary School, what has been your journey? After I did my uh, finished my schooling, then of course I went to the Nauruji Wadia College, and uh, I got married pretty soon. That's just immediately after my 12th standard board exams, <laughs> and uh, started both ways. I was studying too, and I was a housemaker too. And then I had to give up studies because uh, midway because I was already expecting my first daughter, <laughs> and then I was busy with my children. But uh, that inclination was always there behind my mind that I want to do something. I want to pursue something. Mm. And then a uh, few years down the lane, I landed up with a severe backache and a cervical spondylosis as well. Mm. So I was figuring out a way how to you know, deal with it. And the doctor said there's no option but to have medicines. And I'm a person who doesn't like to go the medicine way at all. So I searched for a yoga school and then joined one. And uh, for a year, I was very regularly attending this yoga school. And what I realized is that within a year, uh, not only did the lower back pain cure completely, and as well as the cervical spondylosis, but there was a whole transformation that it brought about in such a beautiful way that uh, it inclined me to you know, get into it deeper, into studying and practicing it deeper. And then the thought came to my mind that why don't we spread this awareness of yoga? Right, right. So before you go there, but uh, you know, you kind of preempted my next question. But before you go there, I want to talk little, a little more about that uh, uh, aspect. Like, how did you think of, you know, going to do the yoga? Did, I know, I know, of course, there are other medical alternatives available. Did you try Ayurveda? Did you try any of the other, uh, you know, uh, Hunani medicine, Inani medicine, etc.? Why did you settle on yoga? Because I'd heard and read about yoga a lot. And mm. then I wanted to, you know, uh, try out that option first before I had to take any drugs or any medicines. And it worked pretty well for me. So growing up, did anybody in you or your family, immediate family, uh, uh, was uh, doing yoga or did you know anybody? No, no, nothing. In fact, I was the first person from my family who got into it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so then what was the uh, reaction from your family? family supported me well and uh, due to that support like I could grow so much ahead yeah with their but support I could get into studying yoga actually I studied I went through a lot of schools and studied it well and then finally I got into teaching so yeah let's talk about that so uh, when you were studying it I remember I have done a bit of yoga in India in Pune I think I went to one class with BK Sayangar the famous yoga guru who used to teach on uh, university road and I got scared because he was pretty, you know, stern teacher. So I was like, wow, this looks difficult. And this guy is a mean guy. Well, he was really nice, but, you know, he was very strict. So, uh, but then you know, after that, I never got into yoga. I did go do some Vipassana meditation uh, and that helped me a lot. But yoga is something that because, you know, nobody around me was doing it and it wasn't, you know, it was considered more like a sedentary sport rather than I used to play cricket and I used to play all these active yeah. sports. So for you, uh, what was that journey of like trying to find the right teacher uh, and the right uh, way to acquire that skill? Okay, Once I entered this yoga school where, of course, it was uh, more of a curative and therapeutic way where I could completely recover from the problems that I had and then strengthen myself much more, strengthen the skeletal muscular body much more. And uh, completely, I, of course, rejuvenated myself through it. And then I uh, started studying. Uh, how, long, with the sorry, first, uh, how long did that process take? How long did you take to reju rejuvenate you? A year. 
A year, okay. Because that's what people don't understand is that you know within one month it's not going to happen. It's not a quick fix. It takes fix. a little time because whatever ailment you have, it's not a one month old ailment. It's a little time for you to set because going gradually into the process is always better than rushing into it. Because then there are chances of again getting over the same pain again. So you That's have to right. go very very gradually hmm. so that you completely you know heal that area, you strengthen it, and the pain never to come back again. So how did you internalize that? Because you must be looking for a quick fix. Oh, this back pain is hurting me. I need to get fixed in a month. How did you figure out? Oh, no, it's not going to take a month. It's going to take me a few months or maybe years. My teacher had already told me that it will take some time. And then she had given me the contraindications that you do not do these particular asanas for the time mm. being till mm. the strength increases. And then once that happened, then immediately I could get into like uh, practically every yoga asana. Awesome. So, so then where, what is that turning point when you say, okay, I am good. I know how to do all these asanas. I'm confident enough to go teach somebody else. How did that trigger point happen? Okay. So what happened was actually my teacher went for Vipassana. <laughs> I did the for, same thing, Vigat uh, Puri as well. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, for a couple of days. And uh, since I was very, very regular in class, so all the students knew me very well. And they came up to me and said that, uh, Maria, why don't you teach in the absence of our teacher? So I said, let me go and ask her first. I need to take her permission. And when I went to my teacher, she said, yes, Maria, I know you're ready. You can go ahead. And that was the turning point because I got that confidence in those 15 days because I was taking the class for that long. And then there was no looking back. Okay. May I ask the name of your teacher? Uh, Dr. Shritija Jujam. Dr. Shritija Jujam. Okay, yes. great. And then, uh, so you started teaching that one class in her absence and then she, uh, had, you know, uh, trusted you to do more classes. Is that how that started? Uh, right. Yeah, I did those classes in her absence. And then uh, my some of my friends, uh, like they persuaded me that why don't you start teaching? Why don't you start taking your own classes? And then I went up to my teacher. I did the teacher's training course from her. And then uh, she would guide me all the time. So I'm very thankful to her. And uh, that's how the journey began. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and then uh, as you started doing these classes, uh, eventually you branched out on your own. Uh, how did you take that leap? Uh, how was that support from the family? And you know, how, how did that whole uh, business aspect of it come along? Right. Well, the family thoroughly supported me, especially my husband, Feroz. And um, I started, of course, with just four students initially when I started my own class. Mm -hmm. And then by word of mouth, it spread and uh, I gave in my 100%. You always do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, it just uh, kept growing and growing. And then uh, I finally have my own yoga center here in Pune, in Undri, Maria's Yoga and Pranayam Center. Mm -hmm. And we're blessed to have so many students with us. It's yeah, our they're... whole yoga community, in fact, now. Exactly. That's that's very uh, you know important. It's a community, not just like a class and a uh, educational uh, institution. It's more of people want to be together for bettering themselves. So that's a very important aspect that actually keeps uh, people loyal. I'm sure you have students that have been coming from day one and they're still with you. Yes, students have stayed back, stayed by with us. They've supported us quite a bit, and uh, um, because of the pandemic. Uh, we had to begin this online classes mm -hmm. and that's been a boon also because uh, now we have students from all around the world that have joined us. So it uh, feels really very nice yeah, so connecting how, to them. So, so sometimes, you know, uh, well, COVID takes away something, but also gives you opportunities. So that's fantastic that yeah. you could, uh, you know, utilize that. How has that affected like your way of teaching? Because now you're teaching to people on a camera and then... Uh, how are you changing your technique to address that? In the beginning, it was very, very difficult because we were not used to this way of teaching at all. We were always used to our students having standing right in front of us and we correcting them with, our, with their alignments and, you know, mm -hmm. in case they're going wrong with any asana. And this was something like totally different. So it took, took a little while, mm. but then we 
caught up with it very well now uh, of course i sh- i would say that there is no comparison that could be made between an online and offline class especially as far as the yoga is concerned because Correct. yeah the yeah, physical it's a very yeah. experiential and a very practical outlook that we have to have um, but something is better than nothing exactly and i i what we have yeah, make I, the best use of it i completely support that something is definitely better than nothing because uh, i feel that uh, the more you procrastinate and you know put it away the the uh, less you get the benefit of it so even if you're doing it online for 5 10 minutes it's better than uh, you know making the time to go to actual class and be physically there so whatever you right. can get yeah that's right so so tell me uh, wh- what what motivates you every day when you uh, wake up what what do you look forward to every day i look forward every day to give my students a, a different sequence hmm like i'm always uh, preparing different sequences like once we work we do arm work once we do leg work but it's uh, purely the traditional form of asanas and also the uh, yoga with props but of course since we're working online the props have become little fewer in number so what kind of props uh, are, what kind of props are these uh, we use yoga belts we use uh, yoga bricks we used to use yoga ropes at the center when the offline classes were going on but with online uh, the use of ropes is less then we use a yoga chair yoga blankets so are these mm-hmm. your innovations or uh, have they always been part of the yogic uh, you know uh, uh, teaching method no no they have been invented by our guruji bk sanger guruji yes <laughs> so we have a lot to thank him that he discovered them and uh, he has given us the prop yoga which is very supportive actually mm-hmm. it's a very good way of uh, you know going into deeper stretches mm-hmm. and uh, in so, so the yoga poses and staying back longer time into yeah. the yoga poses with the help of props so that is the goal right so you want to stay longer so that you can get the muscle strength the core strength and the flexibility to uh, uh, you know kind of keep your body in shape exactly okay and then in terms of uh, how you approach as you said you already think of new ways of doing techniques but then uh, are you also looking at uh, individual students challenges like somebody may as you said you had a back problem but there are you know various uh, students that you have from like you know small kids to really uh, seniors uh, do you like address those do you have separate classes for each of those or do you have like one class for everybody no we have uh, separate classes like uh, we begin with our basic beginners batch then we have a moderate batch where it's something in between an intense advanced class and a basic one then we have advanced yoga classes uh, we have medical yoga therapeutic classes as well so there are more of senior citizens and those uh, students who have some of the other health issues and are not able to join the regular yoga classes so we do have that for them and of course we take personalized training too for those who really require it got it so that's that's really nice that you can uh, you know customize it for all of your students right. and they get the benefit for that uh, so how do you market yourself is it just all still word of mouth word of mouth and uh, whatever groups we have formed because what we did was as soon as the lockdown started in pune here uh, from 22nd march so we were in a fix now what to do because suddenly everything came to a standstill mm. so what we did was in april and may two months we gave free online yoga sessions to everybody all around the world so lots of and lots of people connected and that connection has built up and so uh, we keep sending our posts and our uh, flyers of whatever different uh, sessions we keep conducting on all those groups and then people immediately connect and they tell the others too mm. and uh, just once in a while rarely actually we put it on instagram or facebook mm. but uh, we're not to you know you don't need uh, that keen, yeah. no we don't we're not too keen on doing <laughs> that So is this a one woman show are you doing all of this stuff or do you have any help No we have a whole MYPC team now Okay we have a team of teachers mm-hmm. and these teachers also conduct uh, the classes at other timings Okay so they do so so we yeah. work as a group 
and then you have a, a team that uh, handles student registration marketing all of the uh, all of the uh, uninteresting boring stuff as yes. you say yes <laughs> yeah and I, and I can clearly see that you know you're so motivated and passionate about your students and teaching that uh, do you have any expansion plans do you want how do you plan to grow or do you want to just like make sure this is you know uh, uh, what you can handle yeah, this uh, the yoga center is already there it's working offline and online right now and uh, what we plan is to you know take a few courses uh, especially in medical yoga okay like in medical yoga the knee therapy then the therapy for neck for the cervical and the shoulders therapy for the back so that uh, due to these short courses people can attend these short courses and they can cure themselves get cured themselves actually through mm -hmm. this beautiful drugless therapy that we have this modality healing modality of yoga that we have and they don't have to remain dependent on uh, drugs or medicines exactly yeah now, i think that's an important aspect because uh, uh, you know we have become too dependent in fact now on drugs and medicines as a quick fix yeah. but that may cause you know further issues that we don't we're not aware of younger people will understand as well yeah that's what actually we want to promote uh, kids yoga and yoga for youngsters also uh, they are a little reluctant to join in because mm. uh, everybody has a different notion about yoga they feel it's too slow they feel it's too boring so we want to you know get them out of that thinking pattern and we want more and more children and youngsters to come and attend yoga so from a younger age if they have been practicing yoga and pranayama meditation so yeah. i the next generation will not fall into any of the health issues that we are suffering from yeah i think so basically the, the, we need to prepare the next generation absolutely and i was going to suggest the, basically the way to reach them is through tiktok they are always on tiktok so <laughs> at least my daughters are and if you, sh you know if i tell them something they won't not believe it but if they see it on tiktok they'll say okay this is it so <laughs> maybe there's a way for you to do that and set up a tiktok channel for your yoga classes oh, right so um how long do you want to keep doing this you know i know that you this is your passion but do you fear that this will become a job uh, i intend to do it till the last day of my life yeah but you 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 definitely uh, want to keep clear i don't think that one day you'll get bored and like oh this has just become a job and a chore and i, I don't look forward to doing this anymore do you think that will ever happen no i i don't think so that will happen <laughs> because it's so ingrown into me now Mm -hmm. the concept of yoga that i don't think that will ever happen i hope so too because uh, i feel that once the passion goes out then you lose focus and then you start making compromises and you change lots of things which eventually then doesn't you know provide the real benefit that users should be getting that's true that's why i'm happy actually taking few classes i don't want to take so many classes the whole day that you know i get mm -hmm. uh exhausted and i cannot give my best then anymore that's that's correct yeah because uh, productivity is very important so every minute of yours should be productive yes spoken like a true uh, a plus personality <laughs> i usually close my podcast by asking my guests three questions and uh, i i get interesting answers uh, these are not very you know um, uh, uh, mean questions or you know different questions these are just questions that help you help me understand more about the guest as well so my first question is what do you really what do you wish you really understood to the concept of you no anything in your life like what do you feel like oh i wish i really oh. understand this particular thing mm. um i would want a better communication skill hmm that's that's a great uh, uh, yeah definitely yeah. i think that's that's a great skill to have uh secondly what is the strangest question that anyone has ever asked you i need to think over sure yeah <laughs> nothing really i i just cannot think of something right away Okay, no worries. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't come to you because you feel nobody has asked you one yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the strangest question anybody's okay, asked. Okay, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And lastly, what gives you confidence? Um, my husband Feroz. Definitely. I get my Great confidence answer. from there. 
<laughs> definitely great and, answer uh, uh, my revered gurujis absolutely uh so i think that those those were you know a few things and thoughts that i wanted to share with you and you to share with us so really appreciate that uh with that i would like to thank maria for spending time with me and exploring the fascinating world of a yoga professional and a passionate yoga yoga uh, yogi herself you can join her at a yoga studio maria's yoga and pranayama center at rosewoods undri in pune or online uh, she she is available online as well and i'll put the link in uh, the show notes best of luck maria and uh, keep exploring yeah. thank you thank you so much gautam thanks a lot yeah it was nice talking to you nice talking to you as well